so what's up everybody kind of a heavy video today uh, talking about Lane's crash and uh, just uh, you know this is a video that uh, is it's, it's kind of traumatic so if you got little kids you might want to parents watch them uh, watch it before you let the kids watch it you know it doesn't show blood or anything like that but it's it's pretty rough so you might want to watch it before you let your kids watch uh, to start off with let us just say that Lane's doing pretty good he's he's sore and uh, just trying to get over it but uh, he's, he's, he's here with us and he's doing good and uh, I'm thankful for that uh, what we were doing was uh, filming a video of Lane riding um, I wanted to do something that was kind of like we used to do a music style video and uh, I wanted to shoot and let Lane do the riding so uh, that's that's what we were doing Lane had the GoPro on and I was filming everything else with the camera that I'm filming this with right now and uh, we were just filming little scenes and gonna edit them together slow-mo uh, like I said music video style and uh, We'll show you the video that uh, we were working on that we were actually shooting scenes for when the crash happened. So uh, here you go. They gon' try to call you names, label you with things till you're ashamed. You're a sexist or a racist, white supremacist or gay. They'll attack your reputation, claim that you're the one to blame. And try to make you hate yourself for ways that you behave. They're just names. Embrace them and they'll never cause you pain. They're just words that another person thought up in their brain. They're just names. They do not define you, that's insane. And they'll just call you something different if you change. Call me racist, I don't make no BLM donations I can stand with black folks without a branded corporation All this systemic prejudice, if you live in this nation You privileged, black or Caucasian Call me transphobic, but I support you in your policies I just can't ignore the very basics of biology All I see is men and women trying to live in harmony Not a hundred genders that you wanna be Call me snowflake, cause I'm offended I ain't stone faced Social justice warriors destroying us with woke ways Mad because they voted for the POTUS with the most hate <laughs> Man I miss the old days Call me loser, call me bigot, call me stupid, call me bitter Call me ugly, call me cracker, call me doucher, call me trigger You can call me what you want, cause at the end of the day Man, they're just names Go ahead and call us names, dog. do your thing We ain't tripping cause we heard it all before Give a damn about the names, dog. we feel no pain Your words ain't gonna hurt us anymore Go ahead and call us names, dog. do your thing Y'all are tripping but I hope you find the Lord Give a damn about the names So at the very end of that clip, that last clip, uh, I hit stop and stood up to get out of the way because I realized Lane was going to hit the jump that he wasn't actually going to stop and pull over. And uh, that's why I didn't have it on the HCX because uh, we weren't even anticipating him hitting that jump. It was just a last minute decision. And uh, I'm going to show the GoPro footage at regular speed right now. Um, at the end of the video, the very end of the video, I will play the slow motion version of the video where you can see uh, frame by frame basically what happens. Uh, it's pretty, pretty daggum rough. If you pay attention, you'll see the point where the front tire, as the four-wheeler's flipping, actually lands on the GoPro and breaks it off the helmet mount. And uh, you can see Lane was pretty daggum. took Lane with it for most of that so again we're thankful for him being here but uh here's the regular speed GoPro footage Ooh. yeah I'm fine what happened you got your ass ain't kicked up or you yeah yeah I'm fine I'm fine I'm just just give me a minute, let me get myself straight. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. What? Basically, the only part I really remember very well 
like out of my mind is whenever I'm crossing the highway getting ready to make the trip to the jump but from the GoPro footage and everything whenever I'm going up to the jump you can see that I there's spots in the jump where it's wore down ruts ruts is wore down into it and I for some reason I shifted over to the side of the ruts and so whenever I hit the jump my shocks bottomed out and pogoed me up made me land on my front tires caused me to go into that wreck it's in the slow-mo and it's in the regular speed I don't know why I did that I guess to get more air I don't know I don't know what was going through my mind at the time but I, I did it and here we are now <laughs> yeah I mean you it's just one of those things I'm sure y'all all had those moments where you decide to hit a jump uh, last minute you know and it, if you ride very much something like this is bound to happen to you um, a, lo a lot of people that have rode for any period of time at all have had at least one crash and uh, you know they always say a lot of times accidents happen right around the house and they were right um, I'm riding in the ditch probably a quarter mile from our house we we just left and uh, you know it's just one of those things that happen but uh, I I saw the footage uh, I think it was either the night that the wreck happened or the next day I can't remember which but uh, I watched it at regular speed um, today which is uh, Monday and the crash happened last Wednesday uh, today I was actually able to get up the nerve to put all the footage on the computer and actually look at it. Um, like I said, I'd seen the GoPro footage at regular speed on the GoPro itself, so you really couldn't tell a whole heck of a lot. I still knew from that and haven't seen it in person. It was really bad. Um, it was really bad. Uh, but uh, whenever I I actually got it on the computer where I could tell what I was looking at and I had an opportunity to really slow the footage down and look at it frame by frame. Um, I, I can't believe he was able to talk to me and wasn't just broken all to pieces. You could see how tangled he was in it as it was rolling. It's, it's unreal. Uh, the good Lord was definitely looking after him and we are. So, uh, after the accident happened, uh, as you can see on the video, Lane was talking to me, and uh, I didn't know that there was any kind of, I suspected a concussion, but I didn't see any symptoms immediately. Um, I got him in my truck and brought him home. I uh, had a friend of mine that lived right there who uh, came out and sat with the quad long enough for me to get Lane home. and. Uh, come back and get the four-wheeler which uh, I basically dropped him off went right back loaded it up in about 10 seconds and flew right back to the house and by the time I got back uh, Lane had been sitting there with his mom she was keeping an eye on him and uh, he when I walked in the door he asked me so what happened and uh, he asked if uh, how bad was it and uh, he said how's the Raptor and as soon as I could answer those three questions, he would start over asking again, not remembering that I had just answered all three of those questions for him. This went on for hours that night. And uh, we got, immediately, I, we loaded him up and, and rushed him to the ER. And uh, they got him in and immediately took him back, started doing CT scans and taking blood work and just checking him over. And. Uh, the doctor came in after having looked at the CT scans, basically told us that he had a level two concussion that was actually closer to a level three concussion. That the only reason they didn't classify it as a three because he did not have an extended amount of unconsciousness. But the symptoms that he displayed from his concussions were consistent with what they see with pro football players uh, after a full game of, of banging heads out there. So uh, that should give you some indication, uh, if the video didn't, of, of what uh, what he went through. So, uh, you know, 
Well, everybody knows when they ride that it's a dangerous thing to do. And we have always been aware of that. I've had two crashes before this one for him. And even this was his first crash. He, he's done really good up to this point about being careful and I'm proud of him for that. Uh, like I say, these things are gonna happen. But uh, after seeing him go through that for me, I don't know that I necessarily want to ride motocross again. And uh, the reason I say that is because if we're at a track a couple hours away and something happens, the dynamic of that whole incident changes. I mean, you're talking about getting airlifted to a hospital in a place where I don't know, uh, logistics of getting my wife there, uh, just the, the chaos of the whole incident. That's weighing on me heavy right now. And uh, um, you know, we're talking about it. You know, this is not something that we're gonna make a decision about immediately, but we're talking about it. Just slowing down a little bit, and uh, I mean, y'all already know we wasn't out there doing nothing really crazy anyway, but we have really got to evaluate what we're doing. You can't continue to take sustained concussions and incidents like that and uh, stay healthy. He's too young to be broken up bad. We don't want him to be crippled before he's even 30 years old. So, uh, you know, this is just something we're talking about. Just gonna let you guys kind of know um, what we're what we're looking at and what we're thinking. So, uh, having said all that, I've rambled on here a lot more than I originally intended to, but uh, let me show you the damage to the Raptor. All right, so here's the aftermath, folks. This is what the Raptor looks like after the incident. As you can see, she is in pretty dang rough shape. We're uh, gonna get started here, even bent the key. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna start tearing it apart here and determining exactly what parts we need. Uh, he had just put these a, a arms on it. It was the second time he rode the four wheeler since putting these brand new Alba A arms on here, and you can see they they folded up pretty good. But I don't blame that on the brand itself because for the lick that he took. I'm really surprised it's not worse than that. But I'll show you one of the things that concerns me. I don't know how well you can see here, but there's a little bit of crinkle right there. A little bit of crinkle right there. I, I can tell this is a little bent right here too. And also there's another spot. I don't know if I can get it on camera because of where it's at. I don't think you'll be able to see, I don't know. It's up here by where the radiator mount is. There's another piece of the frame that is, uh, it's bent up. I think it's just the, uh, the top of the steering pillar. It may not be a structural thing. And if it's not, we can bend it back and uh, probably be in okay shape. But uh, that's part of what we're gonna tear down and determine exactly what we've got to do to it. Um, what parts to get on the way uh obviously the headlights completely that whole thing there's destroyed we found all kind of pieces of the little headlight bracket a arms uh possibly a spindle not 100 percent sure hadn't got far enough to take a look at that yet uh handlebars <laughs> they folded up worse than mine did on my wreck but uh handlebars new levers as you can see it stripped out the uh it, yeah, it pulled the nut or the bolt through the threads. Looks like we developed a little leak there on the brake line too in the process. So we're gonna end up getting a new uh, brake perch for sure. Probably go ahead and get a new clutch perch and all that, just replace it all while we're at it. Uh, moving on to the rear end. Oh, this is the part that's heartbreaking. Uh, the grab bar folded up and destroyed his rear plastics. I mean, you'll never straighten that back out to where it's even remotely, yeah, remotely uh, nice looking again. Um, the, another sad thing, if you can see the, uh, I'm trying folks, if you can see the angle of the rear 
subframe. It's pretty tweaked too, and that's aluminum. Uh, so that's pretty much definite to have to be replaced. The axle I don't think is warped. We'll have to check that a little better to be sure, but I don't think that the axle is warped. And, uh, you know, steering stem, obviously, you know, that's, that's the main stuff we're seeing. Plastics are about a grand. We priced a frame a while ago just to see what it cost if we did have to get one. And we can get the frame itself for like a thousand and twenty-five dollars. And the subframe is like a two, like another two seventy. So, uh, that's something that we're going to be getting. That's a couple grand right there. You figure in uh, new A arms, <clears throat> possibly a spindle, handlebars, uh, steering stem, headlight, a new radiator. I didn't mention that, but the radiator is already. Steering stem. If you can see it through there. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not, but uh, the radiator itself is pretty mangled. I never saw any fluids come out of it. It was upside down when I got to it, but uh, I immediately flipped it back over and switched it off. But uh, never seen any fluids coming out, so I think we're good. And uh, hang on, Lane, before you take any more apart, I will go ahead and show you all this. Uh, we come out and tested it a while ago just to, just to make sure and set our minds at ease. Oh, the heel tether's out. That's right. Give me a second. Let me get one from the... Hang on. I can't do it with both hands. I was going to hold that out and... But she cranks. All right. He's getting the one from my Raptor and putting in. Oh. oh. Just to show. Yeah, here we go. Woo! But yeah, I don't want to run her long until we get everything going through good. But she does crank. She does run. So thank the Lord for that. Uh, got a lot of parts to buy, folks, and uh, get on the way. And uh, you can expect a full build video to be coming. And a uh, breakdown of parts and expenses and all that stuff. We're, we're going to try to really document this one really well. And... Uh, We'll show it to you guys as soon as we get done. You won't see this four-wheeler again until it is back rideable and in way better shape than it is now. So stay tuned for that. So as you can see, we got a good bit of work ahead of us getting this thing torn apart and rebuilt. Uh, parts are already on the way and the Raptor has already started being torn down. Uh, we're going to document it. I actually already have started documenting it and uh, intend to document it all the way through. Uh, hopefully at the end of it we'll be able to put together some kind of parts list and uh, you know show what we spent on it and uh, you know maybe give some links to the parts so if uh, you guys are interested in it you can pick them up for yourself. Um, as we I don't know if we're going to do another ride video before this is done. It's probably going to take a couple of months for everything to come in because there's some parts that are on back order. And uh, that's kind of where we're at right this minute, uh, waiting on parts to come in. We have got his YFZ running, so it's possible that we do a ride video before this comes out. But he's got a couple of weeks to go before he can ride again. So uh, Yeah, I can't even drive. Yeah. They, the doctor told me, told me not to drive. Yeah. Like, they... Um, I weld at work and they don't even want me to weld. Yeah. So I just got to sit there and watch them. Well, you got to give yourself time to recover. Well, I know, it just... Yeah. Sitting there like a knot on a log watching them. <laughs> All right, well, um, if we do a ride video, you'll see it. If not, the next video that comes out will be the, will be the re-unveiling of his Raptor. Um, you won't see it again until it's until it's ready to go, and uh, by the parts and stuff that's on the <laughs> way, you guys are in for a treat. I cannot wait to see this thing when it is done. Uh, we're gonna try to break YouTube with it, y'all. Build back better. That's right. <laughs> we're gonna build back <laughs> Make better. Make quads great again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. By the way, the slow mo footage is coming right after this.
So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Try to call you names, label you with things till you're ashamed. Repeat it till you really start believing what they say. They gon' stamp it on your forehead and scream it till you break. They love to say they woke, they not awake. They're just names, afraid of anyone who ain't the same. So they classify your thoughts as controversial, not okay. Then they cancel you till everything you have all gets erased. They tryna tell the world you bad, they're just names. Call me conservative or liberal, Republican or Democrat. I'm somewhere in the middle, but y'all don't know what to do with that. The system got you so obsessed with classifying right or left. You never call a person human, call them names instead. Call me sexist. Men run the world cause they're aggressive. But behind every man, there's a woman just as successful. We will never be equal in every way that ain't helpful. Our differences are why we're great together.